So this channel is really all about the things that I wish I would have known when I was younger. So another thing that I wish I would have known is uh, the weak efficient market hypothesis. So the efficient market hypothesis essentially says in its strong version that you cannot predict the markets because the markets have already taken into account all the information. So you are always buying something at the precise uh, value which it holds. Every, every prediction and everything um, and including uh, future pr predictions about its future behavior have already been factored into the price. Uh, in the weak efficient market hypothesis, uh, you have still highly efficient markets, but you can at least uh, perhaps still use uh, fundamental analysis and get something out of it, uh, but you can't uh, really outperform them in any significant way. You certainly can't do technical analysis in which you base your financial decisions on just the price alone because the price alone is known to everyone and if it's known to everyone it should already have been factored into uh, the current price and so this is something that I didn't uh, really believe when I was um, younger and I thought I could actually predict or beat the market and when I was 16 uh, I taught myself technical analysis with moving average, convergence, divergence, ADX, Bollinger Bands, all that stuff. And I thought I was a genius because I was making $700 in a day and I dropped out of high school. And it turns out I was just very, very lucky. I was just on an incredible streak of luck. And it wasn't the case that I could actually uh, predict the markets with a certain model that I had developed. I had just um, been very, very lucky. So this is something that you have to take into account with your investing. You probably are not going to beat the markets. And if you, insofar as you do, you're getting lucky. Um, and the, the way you can beat the markets, for example, is, well, there's, there are some ways to beat the markets. For example, you can have insider knowledge. Uh, so you can have knowledge that other people don't know about, in which case, yeah, you could beat the markets. Uh, you could get lucky. And the other thing you could do is um, to, there are, in fact, profitable institutions that essentially just use high-speed algorithmic trading in which they are scalping the markets very, very quickly. And so they don't actually need to be accurate as long as the probabilities uh, add up for them. You know, if, if you have 51% uh, or 52% or 53% uh, winning and you really leverage that and you are trading highly um, liquid markets, in other words, they have a lot of volume, so you could just go on and, and, and trade and, and just leverage the shit out of that, you're going to make money regardless. Um, and even there, I think it's if you win, if you actually uh, win with that strategy, with high-speed algorithmic trading, just get out. Uh, just win once and get out. Uh, use that to your advantage. Um, but yeah, I, I think that those are really just about all the things you can do. You can't actually uh, go out there and devise some clever plan that no one has thought about because it has already factored in all the, all the experts essentially have already outperformed you. It's the idea that the entire market should be interpreted as that which the highest level of human expertise would price it at. Now that doesn't mean what a super intelligence would price it at. It's not super intelligent. So it's not like it just automatically immediately absorbs your strategy a hundred percent and it's like literally unbeatable like i said you know if you have insider knowledge if you have certain you know certain experts can outperform certain experts um and it, this is just but in the long run they don't like no one has an anti-fragile uh strategy that could just work forever because that's like the nature of the market so 
just don't get into that. <laughs> Pretty much is my advice is don't get into that. Everyone who doesn't understand at least the, the weak version of the efficient market hypothesis uh, because the strong version may be too, may be too strong <laughs> is, is, um, is crazy. You, like you're crazy. You're not going to actually uh, win reliably. So how can you make money in these sorts of things? Well, there's one thing you could do. For example, you could beat the bookies with their own numbers. That's one thing. Like you could go into sports betting and you could use, you could assume that the bookies have already um, developed, you know, developed the best strategy possible because they have hired, hired experts for decades, teams of data analysts and you know, just the best possible resources, financial resources and human capital, they have used that in order to have the absolute best predictions. And so they have incorporated that into their uh, pricing. And so you could use that, you could just not assume that you can beat them, but you just use their own data in order to beat them whenever you find mispriced events by their own uh, definition of mispriced. And why would they misprice some events? They do that in order to um, lure potential uh, customers. They, they want to lure certain people to come and bet when the odds may be like otherwise way too unappealing. And so they will do that sometimes and you could exploit that. But the thing is, they will ban you. Like it, once they notice that you are winning too much, they will actually ban you. And it's not illegal actually uh, so far for them to false advertise uh, you know, th th that you, you're getting a fair shot. Uh, because I guess it, somewhere in the paperwork, uh, it's just, it doesn't say that it's illegal for them to just block your account or limit your account. What they will tend to do is they will limit your account as opposed to just blocking you completely. They will just limit the amount of trades that you can make. And by limiting the amount of trades that you can make, it is far less uh, profitable for you uh, because you do need to make still a lot of trade trades. I mean, you know, even with their uh, numbers, it's not always going to be perfect. They're not going to perfectly um, predict which match uh, the, the outcome and, and the proper way to bet on each match. So you still have to do this for months in order to turn out profit. But the thing is, after your first round of success, uh, that's pretty much, that caps you off. And so I, I've yet to seen someone who just uses that knowledge to go all in, to just build like a squad of people and put in like hundreds of thousands, but distribute it amongst different people so that they can all win. Um, and, and therefore, you know, you could cheat, sort of cheat the system by having a whole bunch of people. They would probably find out um, once, once they realize that too many of their customers seem to be winning relative to how they used to. And they might suspect, hmm, maybe someone's, um, you know, plotting this, someone is plotting against us. And yeah, you would be plotting and they'd probably do something about that. They would, they would find a way to ban you. Uh, because yeah, they, they're trying to, they have a business running and it really ultimately just serves um, a service to those people who have boring lives and want to uh, just gamble. And, and it's not really something that you're supposed to beat, I guess. You're just supposed to have fun and gamble and lose um, and win sometimes.